as the Minnesota Fine Vikings are staring down the barrel of the offseason, just lonely, desolate, and cold here in Minnesota, almost like it's Western New York. Anyway, uh, even though the Vikings get a quasi mulligan this year with the Rona, with injuries, meh, meh, uh, someone has, still has to answer for the Vikings not making the playoffs. So it's probably not going to be Zimmer, given his extension, given the way that the Vikings uh, finish up after the bye. But some bodies will have to hit the floor, let the body hit the floor underneath the bus. So here are five coaching changes uh, that the Vikings need to make this offseason. Number one, fire Mike Zimmer. It's good. It's good. I like the Jets outfit, though. Anyways, number one, Fire Maro Maloof, special teams coordinator. So this one is a given. This one, frankly, should have already been done. You saw the Lions fired their uh, special teams coordinator. Uh, issues with Dan Bailey's kicking midseason. Issues with long snapper Austin Cutting. Uh, Skullquit hasn't been that great punting this year, to be honest. Uh, the drafting uh, and failures of K.J. Osborne, which Maloof obviously had uh, some input in. The embarrassment of punt and kick coverage units. Uh, two pun uh, punts blocked against Detroit. It's been a mess. It's been less ideal. It's been an absolute clown show. Maloof has to go. Also, kicking consultant Nate Kading. Hey, what would you say you do here? Uh, and then also, I mean, TBD on special uh, assistant to the regional special teams coordinator, Ryan Ficken, who's been with the Vikings for like 12 years, something ridiculous like that. He's been assistant special teams coordinator for eight years. He served under Prefer, and then instead of giving him the job after Prefer went to Cleveland, uh, they were like, eh, Maloof, come on in. But yeah, fire Mara Maloof. Number two. Fire Rick Dennison, offensive line coach. Now, this may be tough to do. This might be a deal breaker since he's Gary Kubiak's guy. They go way back like chiropract. But he, Rick Dennison, is the one who allowed Dozier on the field every single damn week, even though it's extremely clear. And we saw it. Brett Jones is a superior guard. P uh, plop him on the left side with Ezra Cleveland. Let's go hunt. Also, Rick Dennison was the one who gave us right guard Pat Elfline. Like, oh, no, their choice. He's just there. Boom. He was also the one who gave us four weeks to Drew Samia. He is the one who denied us Ezra Cleaver for five weeks, right? Yes, Dalvin is the number one running back in the NFL. Yes, the outside zone scheme is glorious when it's working. But the other side, the other side of the coin, pass blocking, the Vikings are 26 in the National Football League. They've allowed 183 pressures and 34 sacks this year. Yeah, uh, Cousins is the third most pressured quarterback uh, in the NFL. That's the reason why they don't throw it 50 times a game, by the way. So, yeah, Dennison, either you bench Dozier, and if you can't agree to that, you got to go. And maybe you have to go anyway. I don't know. Next up, uh, change number three the Vikings need to make uh, this offseason uh, in coaching staff. Andre Patterson, sole defensive coordinator. Oh, tricks. Anyways, I, I did not like the co-regional uh, to the defensive coordinator setup, even though, yeah, it's mainly window dressing. It's mainly titles and probably a pay bump. Uh, but Zimmer is the defensive coordinator. So, Patterson is the best defensive line coach in the National Football League. Have him either focus on that or bump him up to full bird, make him full defensive coordinator with play calling duties. Take that off Mike Zimmer's plate. We've been yelling about that for years. I let Adam Zimmer focus on being uh, the coach of the linebackers. He's done a phenomenal job with that, but it's Andre Patterson's time. I mean, this defense has been an absolute train wreck of a mess, uh, but uh, bump, uh, giving the responsibilities to Andre Patterson, having one guy be responsible and taking a little bit off of Mike Zimmer's plate, let him be the actual head coach of the team. Move on with life. Let's go. Next up, Change number four the Vikings need to make on the coaching staff. Find a passing game coordinator. Now, you know, Kubiak obviously was great at times this year, but the Vikings need to incorporate a bit of a more modern, uh, quick passing game. They do. Uh, more 11 personnel, more empty. And I, I, frankly, at times did like the Vikings run a la running a lot of two tight end sets. Love me some CJ Ham. Uh, Dalvin Cook obviously thrives uh, with heavier personnel. But, I mean, just... More ways of getting the ball out quick. Getting the ball to Jefferson and Thielen and BB and wide receiver TBDs in space and Irv and Gronklin. Just do it. Can we do that? Hmm? Uh, now, that could be quarterbacks coach Clint Kubiak, who's struck up a nice rapport. Kirk Cousins last two years. Frankly, take last year, which was probably Kirk Cousins' best season of his career. And then after the bye, which he's played lights out. It's been pretty good. It's been pretty good with Clint Kubiak. Or wide receiver coach Andrew Janaka, who obviously did a nice job with uh, Justin Jefferson. But... Was that more of a, hey, Justin, go do your thing. I'm Andrew Janako. Hell, I could do that. Let's go, right? Uh, fresher eyes, newer ideas, incorporating more passing concepts that weren't in vogue in 1992. Just a little bit of freshening. Yeah. Uh, lastly, uh, change number five that the Vikings didn't make on the coaching staff. 
utilizing Dom Capers. And now, as weird as that sounds, as much as Dom Capers was a punchline when he was a longtime defense coordinator of the Packers, I mean, his own blitzing merits, his own blitzing uh, concepts, I mean, they, they certainly have merit, and they should be have, having a seat at the table. So I, I get that this offseason was very limited what you can do. A massive uh, changeover in personnel, plus no OTAs, limited training camp, no preseason. I get it. So it's hard to mix up and incorporate new ideas and looks and fronts. But uh, you, you did see just a little, just a skosh of Dom Capers' influence as Zimmer incorporated quite a few more zone blitzes on third down. But you need more. You need more, especially uh, once you get Daniil back, once you potentially get Anthony Barr back, plus uh, one, once you get some more, uh, a, another draft class in here, you need to incorporate newer ideas, mix up the fronts, mix up the looks, because I, I think teams are, well, teams have caught up to the double-A mug gap look, even though it certainly has uh, its place and certainly it can still get it done. We just need some more. We just need some more. You need more different looks to generate a pass rush from whole cloth. Uh, plus, you have players who can win in multiple spots. You have DJ Wanham, who can be on the edge, who can be a stand-up linebacker and do all those things. Anthony Barr, a great strong side linebacker. Put his hand in the dirt more, rush the edge like he did in college back in the day. Back in the day. James Lynch, if he can actually get his ass on the field, he can play three-tech, he can play five-tech, and do all those things. Eric Wilson is probably the best rushing linebacker on the team since you don't let uh, Anthony Barr rush the passer. Harrison is basically Troy Polamalu, so just line him up all over the place. And if the Vikings do draft a, a true stand-up uh, uh, rush outside linebacker, utilizing some Dom Capers 3-4 looks and base and 3-3-5 nickel. I mean, why why the hell not? I mean, what are we doing here? Let's go. But uh, that's it. That's a look at a couple of helpful suggestions. Five coaching changes that the Vikings need to make right now this offseason. Uh, what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.